Welcome to part two of this short two-part video series on cleaning. My name is Betsy Bin, and I am the director of the Produce Safety Alliance and executive director of the Institute for Food Safety at Cornell University. In the first video, we talked about considerations as you set up your cleaning plan, including defining cleaning, the importance of communication, identifying surfaces that need cleaned and their attributes, assessing your infrastructure and tools, and finally, the importance of training. I highly recommend you listen to part one first, but this was created to stand alone, so feel free to do as you prefer. Today, we will tackle wet and dry cleaning. As a broad overview, wet cleaning involves the use of water and water-based detergents. Important considerations include making sure your operation can manage water. This means having a supply of clean water that has no detectable generic E. coli and being able to drain the water as it's being used, so equipment, walls and floors can dry after they are cleaned. Some operations due to the commodities they handle, such as nuts, or because of their infrastructure, such as floors without drains, should not be using water. In this case, there is the option of dry cleaning with vacuums, alcohol-based detergents, and other dry cleaning appropriate resources. The important point is that both wet and dry cleaning have the same goal, to remove the opportunity for microorganisms to persist and grow by cleaning surfaces. In the next few slides, I'm going to step through both wet and dry cleaning. Step one of wet cleaning is to remove any obvious dirt and debris from the surface. This can be done by using a brush to sweep, air to blow the debris off, or water to rinse off debris. If using water, always use clean water that has no detectable generic E. coli for all sanitation steps. If you are wondering how you know if it has no detectable generic E. coli, this is done through testing, either by your operation, if you're on a well, or if you have municipal water, it is likely done by the supplier. You can ask for copies of these testing records. Avoid cleaning with high pressure washers or air compressors, as this could spread pathogens and other debris over a large area in your operation. Step two of wet cleaning is to apply a detergent and scrub the surface. Be sure to use an appropriate detergent for the type of soil that needs to be removed. Some detergents are designed to remove fats, while others are better at removing proteins and others still at removing carbohydrates. Select the detergent that removes the type of soil that is present. Apply the detergent at the level recommended on the label and physically scrub the surface to remove any soil and debris. You may need special brushes to reach all the areas. Cleaning in a well-lit area is best, but use a flashlight if necessary. If you cannot see it, you cannot clean it. So make sure you have the light you need to see what you are doing. Removing the soil and other organic buildup can help minimize the formation of biofilms. Step three of wet cleaning is to rinse the surface with clean water that has no detectable generic E. coli. Make sure all of the soil and debris and detergent is removed. Residual detergent can neutralize sanitizer, so make sure you rinse completely. Although this video is focused on cleaning, step four would be to apply a sanitizer when necessary and appropriate for the surface. Some sanitizers must air dry and others must be rinsed. This is why it is critical to read and follow the label. Remember, when it comes to sanitizers, the label is the law. But before we move to dry cleaning, I do wanna talk about one more thing. I want to take a moment here to mention that doing a poor job of wet cleaning can actually increase your risks. Some bacteria, such as Listeria monocytogenes, can persist and grow in cool, wet environments. If you do a poor job of cleaning and then allow your equipment and floors to remain wet, you can actually encourage pathogens like Listeria to grow. So if you decide to use wet cleaning, it is critical that you manage the water and that you make sure equipment, walls, and floors have a chance to dry. Train employees to eliminate all standing water and properly handle equipment so it can dry. This may mean hanging up tools or opening flaps on equipment to promote airflow so that drying can occur. It may also require you to invest in tools such as floor squeegees to move standing water to the drain or fans to promote drying. Step one of dry cleaning is to pre-clean by removing any obvious dirt and debris. Remember, same goal as wet cleaning, just without the water. 
So use brushes, scrapers, air blowers, or vacuums. Step two in dry cleaning is to clean the surface by scrubbing. Some dry cleaning options include alcohol-based detergents, low moisture steam, or pelletized CO2 blasting. Again, this video is focused on cleaning, but step three would be to apply a sanitizer when necessary and appropriate for the surface. Apply a sanitizer approved for use on food contact surfaces such as a high percentage isopropyl alcohol. Let the surface air dry. Remember, again, when it comes to sanitizers, the label is the law. So follow the label completely. But before you sanitize, it is critical to make sure your cleaning step has been effective. As noted earlier and now quoted on the slide, the FSMA Produce Safety Rule draft guidance notes that inspections should include a visual assessment for remaining residues such as visible soil, food residue, grease, and other materials. Some operations may choose to use methods beyond visual inspection, such as ATP as seen in this photo on the left. It is also worth mentioning that if your operation handles any allergens, you should be following any requirements necessary to prevent cross-contamination. In summary, wet and dry cleaning have the same goal, to effectively remove dirt and debris to make sure food contact surfaces and the environment do not support survival of microorganisms such as bacteria that can multiply on dirty, wet surfaces. Proper cleaning also minimizes the formation of biofilms. Both wet and dry cleaning can be done effectively with the proper tools and training. Each operation needs to decide based on the commodities they handle, infrastructure and resources, what type of cleaning is right for them. Thank you for your attention. We would love your feedback. You can pause this video and point your cell phone camera at the QR code or click on the hyperlink to take a six question survey. It's quick, it's easy, and it will help us make videos to meet your needs. Thanks again for your time.